you really can't walk or drive anywhere without seeing invasive plants. So in Ohio, an invasive plant is a plant not native to this state that when introduced has negative impacts on the ecosystem. And the ones that are invasive are ones that have many ways of reproducing, they don't have any natural controls, and they have the ability to take over native plant communities and, and squeeze out the native species. Hi, my name is Zach Bullheimer. I am the land manager at Glen Helen Nature Preserve in Yellow Springs. I actively am responsible for management of invasive species across 1,100 acres and uh, seek to promote and encourage others to learn and actively manage invasive species on their own. My name is Jennifer Windis, and I am the president of the Ohio Invasive Plants Council. Uh, I worked for the Department of Natural Resources for 31 years um, on state nature preserves and wildlife areas uh, where it conducted land management and invasive species uh, control and education. Once they get established, and there is kind of a lag time for invasive plants to get established, so a lot of people don't notice them until all of a sudden there's a lot. And at that point, they're able to outcompete native plants. So if you were looking at something in the woodlands like bush honeysuckle or garlic mustard, pretty soon you lose all your native wildflowers and you just have bush honeysuckle and garlic mustard. Um, and that happens you know, in, in water bodies like ponds and lakes and rivers and streams, it happens in woodlands, uh, grasslands, all, all different plant communities. So the primary impact is where it's causing the native plants to slowly disappear. Just by being able to take over a landscape and really create a monoculture of a non-native invasive plant, we are losing the biodiversity of that ecosystem. So we are losing plant species, and I'm talking extinction level losing. That then impacts the native wildlife that needs that native uh, plants in order to survive as well. So native plants are the ones that are truly adapted to our native species of wildlife, butterflies, birds, you know, all the things that we like to look at in our backyard. And so if we have a lot of non-natives or invasives in our yard, then it's not, it's not an ideal, in fact, in many cases, it's a detrimental habitat for them. Many of these populations have exploded. And so what used to be small populations of invasive plants are now you know, hundreds of acres of like purple loosestrife or hundreds of acres of giant reed grass. And so land managers are, you know, facing just an overwhelming amount of work to do with limited staff and resources. A lot of the invasive plants that exist on our landscape exist outside of our control. So that's on private lands, that's on lands owned by somebody else in which I'm not responsible or you know, obligated or allowed to go manage without special permissions and things like that. So for one, there is the amount of unmanaged invasive species that are a constant influx into natural areas and you know, actively managed areas. On top of that, uh, it is the labor aspect, the cost and the physical aspect of doing the work itself. Um, every invasive species, every invasive plant specifically, involves a specific management strategy to remove it from the landscape. And each species might have numerous ways to do that, um, whether it's uh, herbicide um, and various chemical management strategies, physical management strategies, mechanical. And depending on the plant, you can end up with invasive trees that are, you know, 12, 24 inches in diameter or larger, and that requires more serious equipment. So it all has a cost for the labor. Of things that people can do to get involved and it doesn't all involve like physical work of getting out and doing the work themselves. Uh, certainly opportunities to get involved with various land managing agencies and organizations in Ohio there's lots of opportunity to volunteer and actually get out there and do stewardship work. Just learn what's in your backyard. Maybe you have invasive species right in your backyard that you yourself are capable to absolutely capable of managing. Learn the plants that are out there. 
Many people don't know the difference between invasive species and native species, so just starting by learning plants and, and getting yourself outside. You know, just trying to improve awareness and talk to people about what the issues are is really important. I mean, try not to plant invasives on your own property. Get rid of some of the invasives on your property and plant alternatives, you know. Helping people understand, if you get rid of these plants, here's some other good ones that are available and you can replace the invasives with. So there's a lot of different things that people can do, whether it's, you know, in a physical way or an educational way, or just helping to, you know, spread awareness. Knowing that people like myself and you and I and, and folks in the state of Ohio are actively interested in trying to manage invasive species, that is the glimmer of hope in the future that we have to, to continue to keep the biodiversity of our ecosystems. Whenever we reduce biodiversity, we are essentially causing the collapse of ecosystems. And for many of us, we're not, you know, if you live in the city and you don't really know much about natural areas and you don't see how all these plants and animals are interacting and the benefits that we get from that diversity, it's very hard to appreciate that there is any value in that. The future of invasive plants is more invasive plants. It's, it's not that we're going to figure out how to get rid of them completely. The good thing though is always to remind people that we are making progress and that we see lots of good responses to the work we're doing. The problem of invasive plants is not going to go away on its own. They will just continue to increase and outcompete native plants. So if we want to maintain these areas, you know, with diversity and for future generations in particular, what we think, you know, Ohio should look like or we'd like it to look like, especially the high quality natural areas, this is why we should care about it, because it's up to us.